ಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಾಂಧ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಶಲಾಕೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮೀಲಿತ ಯೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣೀ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದೀ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ನಾವು ಲೆಟಸ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೋಲ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಸೋಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಲೈಫ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಭಗವದ್ ಗೀತಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಸೋಲ್ ಟು ಬಿಗಿನ್ ವಿತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಭಗವದ್ ಗೀತಾ ದೇಹಿ ನೋಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಯಥಾ ದೇಹೆ ಕೌಮಾರಂ ಯೌವನಂ ಜರ ತಥಾ ದೇಹಾಂತರ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿರ್ ಧೀರಸ್ತತ್ರ ನ ಮುಖ್ಯತಿ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೈಡ್ ದಟ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಧೀರ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ಡಿಸ್ಟರ್ಬ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಲೆಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಡೆತ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ death also is a change of body tatha dehantara prapti so shri la prabhupada explains generally when a person dies the relatives lament oh my father has gone or my grandfather has gone now if you become dhira if you become self realized then you will not lament like that so to help us understand shrila propa gives an example just like if you have a friend who is living in an apartment like the friend moves from one apartment to another apartment then you are not agitated you are not disturbed you don't become uh, you don't think the person is no more he was in this apartment he has gone to another apartment so there's no question of becoming disturbed or agitated similarly one who understands the person is the soul but as soul the person is transmigrating from one body to another so one who knows such a person will not be disturbed or agitated or lament about the loss of his friend or relative because he knows what happens at the time of death he also knows from the scriptures that the departed soul has gone somewhere some definite destination some definite place or some definite um, type of body just like another example shrila prabhupada gives if uh, somebody is in america and then they hear that their friend is going to india they have never been to india but they know oh he is such and such a person is going to india now how do they know is going to india because he has purchased a ticket to go to india and then after he goes to india he is going to stay in some other place in india he was staying in one house or apartment in america he is going to india means he is going to stay in some apartment or some house so like that from shastra we can know that when a person dies 
or when a person quits a body, where has he gone? He has got another body. So there is no cause for lamentation. Now why has he left this body? Because this body has become uh, useless. Cannot stay in this body anymore. It's like any of your dress you are using. Now after the dress becomes worn out and no longer usable, you discard that and take another dress. This is exactly what Krishna says. Just like Vasamsi Jirnani Yatha Vihaya Vasamsi dress Jirnani when it becomes worn out Yatha Vihaya you discard the worn out uh, dress or cloth and then what do you do? Navani Grannati you take a new dress uh, Similarly Krishna says when this body becomes worn out old useless then you leave this body you discard this body and you are given a new body so there is no difficulty in understanding this and it's a fact it actually is a fact huh? so uh, this uh, dehantara we have to understand very carefully that the change of body at death is a fact and it is true in all cases without exception there is no exception to this at all in this world anybody everybody who dies they change their body and this is exactly like krishna says the change of body which happens when we grow through our uh, different stages in life we are born as a small infant and then uh, childhood, youth, old age. Uh, just like Prabhupada explains again, if a child is just born, hmm, the mother knows that child is very, very, very small. Let's say in the womb, the child must maybe six inches. And now the child has uh, come out of the mother's womb, then the child very quickly starts growing. Bhagavad Gita explains it is not growth, it is actually change of body. Anyway, now the body is not the same or the body is not identical in every respect to the body which was there, but still the mother is not disturbed by this changing body. The mother is not disturbed by changing body because the child or the actual individual is the same. That is very, very obvious to the parents or anybody. You say, you have actually grown up. You have grown up. You were a small child. You have grown up now. So this you, who is that you? Or somebody says, I have grown up now. Who is that I? That I is the person who is unchanging. The person is the same, unchanging person. Uh, so, similarly, a dhira, a person who is self-realized, knows the laws of the transmigration of the soul. How does the person know? From the scriptures, like Bhagavad Gita explains transmigration of the soul. So, by knowing this transmigration of the soul, understanding that at the time of death this transmigration happens, the person does not lament the death of a friend or a relative or a near and dear one. So also from Shastra they can know my father or my grandfather or such and such a friend has gone to what destination. So we should learn that certain things we have to see with the eyes of the Shastra, eyes of the scriptures, Shastra Chakshu, to understand ultimately the reality of everything in this world. We should not only go by what we see with our eyes or what we perceive with our uh, five senses. Uh, sometimes 
these senses are not capable of helping us understand what is the reality. So another example Srila Prabhupada gives. Uh, we have common experience of seeing the sun, especially when it is just rising on the horizon, if you are able to see the sun. You can see one disk this big. Now, by your naked eyes, you cannot figure out how big is the sun planet. You cannot figure out. But from an authoritative book, either the Vedic literature or from even your uh, uh, geography book, you can understand the sun is 1400,000 times bigger than the earth planet itself. The earth planet is huge, but the sun is several hundreds of thousands of times bigger than the earth. This you cannot see with your eyes, never, you can never see with your eyes and understand or perceive. So just like if you want to know actually what is the size of that sun planet, huh, you have to refer the scriptures. And by reference to the scriptures, you know it is very, very, very big. Or how far is the sun? Now from the scriptures, we know it is 90 million miles away. 90 million miles away. But it looks like it is just on the horizon. The way it is rising, it is on the horizon. No, it is not on the horizon. Horizon is on this earth. But the sun is 90 uh, million miles away from the earth. So it's not as near as it appears. Neither it is as small as it appears. So we see certain things like this through the eyes of the scriptures. So the scriptures are authoritative and we should actually learn about everything ultimately about the reality of especially the soul or about the supreme soul god krishna should learn from the scriptures <clears throat> now whatever is explained by srila prabhupada he says everything is based on what is explained in the scriptures nothing prabhupada is telling or the acharyas are teaching us or the spiritual master teaches based on what he is seeing, based on what he has understood from his senses, from his uh, uh, own mind. No, he is teaching, he is explaining, he is presenting everything based on the authoritative scriptures. So we have to accept the uh, authoritative scriptures only then we can actually uh, uh, get this understanding and eventually we can even get the realization or see the reality of whatever is told in the scriptures. Another example Srila Prabhupada gives that uh, we accept the authority of the scriptures without any uh, argument. Sometimes uh, when something is told in the scriptures which may seem to be uh, not fitting with our logic, uh, with our own uh, logic. One example that is given is, in the Vedas it is said if you touch stool, you become contaminated or impure, you have to take a bath hmm, to become purified. And this is not difficult to understand. But the same scriptures are telling us that cow dung, the stool of the cow, is pure. Uh, so if somebody uh, is touching cow dung, it is not that they become contaminated or it is not impure. Actually cow dung not only is pure, but it purifies even a contaminated uh, place. So how this contradiction is to be understood? So Srila Prabhupada says, you accept the scriptures are telling stool is impure, but there is an exception. Cow dung is always, uh, stool is impure, but cow dung is pure. So, uh, this is superficially a contradiction, 
but because it is stated in the scriptures authoritative scriptures one should accept them and if somebody wants to do some research just like somebody did research one indian uh, uh, scientist he did research and this is about 100 150 years back and he uh, discovered that cow dung has got antiseptic properties it's not uh, some blind belief or it's not simply some uh, sentiment some people have oh cow dung is pure no actually cow dung has got antiseptic properties so that is proven now like that some things may be it is possible to prove what is given in scriptures is correct even though it doesn't uh, seem to be right according to our logic but everything cannot be proven like that so we also should remember that simply going by our perception through our senses simply going by our understanding or our logic is faulty because primarily every human being who has taken birth in this world by force of uh, nature has got four defects this is very important to understand uh, why we should accept the scriptures authoritative scriptures and that's the only way uh, it says that uh, we got four defects the first defect is we are all prone to commit mistakes there is no person there is no exception to this uh, uh, defect being present in everyone uh, like uh, even great men who have done very very uh, wonderful uh, work even they are sometimes making mistakes so uh, there is no exception to this if you uh, carefully examine so the second uh, defect is uh, a person is an illusion illusion means he is not able to always perceive the reality just like in a desert this example is commonly given to help us understand what is this illusion in a desert uh, where there is no water it seems like there is a lot of water so the foolish animals who are searching for water in a desert they simply uh, are looking for water they chase this mirage at a distance hot air a layer of hot air on the sand looks like a body of water so they keep chasing this when there is no water they keep running 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 because they are very thirsty and they never come across where is there is a possibility that in a desert there will be a big body of water in an oasis yes there is some water available if at all but not in a regular desert hmm? so these animals without realizing that it is simply an optical illusion this mirage effect they keep on chasing the mirage and they die or they become unconscious and without getting water simply a place where there is no water they are searching for water similarly we are also under illusion like everybody thinks i am the body uh, everybody thinks about their identities and this body that's why they describe themselves in terms of their body the body has taken birth in india i say i am indian or the body has taken birth in a particular family oh i am born to such and such a parents in such and such a family so all the identification is based on the body but the reality is from the shastras from the bhagavad gita we understand i am not the body i am soul i am spirit soul i am completely different from the body so this illusion can be overcome only by uh, studying hearing understanding from the authoritative scriptures similarly we have got a propensity to cheat now 
this propensity to cheat, somebody may think, oh, there are people who are cunning, who are not principled, who are uh, not uh, well behaved, not properly uh, uh, trained up in good um, habits. Such people only cheat. No. Even those who don't have an intention of cheating, they also, because of this, this, this defect, they end up cheating. How is that? For example, somebody thinks that uh, <clears throat> I know some particular uh, subject, so I can teach. But whatever they know or they think they have learnt very nicely, that is imperfect knowledge, except for knowledge from the scriptures, which is realized by the method of uh, uh, realize, self-realization, except for such a person, nobody has perfect knowledge. Just like we have experience in uh, uh, science, they had one particular understanding of what is the atom and then it changes hmm, as they discover more or they do more research or they find out more. But how long will this uh, understanding keep changing? It will keep on changing as they keep discovering newer and more and more newer things. Whereas what is stated in the scriptures, it is perfect knowledge because the source is perfect. The scriptures are not given or uh, man-made, given by a human being. No, the scriptures are given by the supreme perfect personality, Krishna, supreme Lord. The source is perfect, therefore the scriptures are actually perfect. So, knowledge from the scriptures are perfect. Whereas our understanding, our knowledge, our uh, uh, perception is imperfect because we have inherently got that defect. So, this is the third defect, propensity to cheat, because of which we may be ourselves misled and we end up misleading others also. This happens many times. Without our intention also, it happens. Ultimately, the last defect which is very, very important to understand is that we have got imperfect senses. Just like with these eyes, how can you see the sun and determine what is the dimension, what is the size of the sun, how big is the sun? You can never... Uh, see the sun and uh, determine its uh, uh, size. You can never do that. Hmm. Similarly, uh, our eyes, closest to our eyes are the eyelids. But can you see your eyelids? You cannot. You cannot see your eyelids. So like this, uh, our senses are imperfect. Uh, our sense, even in science they say, uh, uh, what is visible to these eyes is a certain range of uh, 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 objects which are existing and certain objects which are actually existing we are not able to see because of our limitation of the eye to perceive those objects. Uh, so these are all accepted facts that our senses are imperfect. Now somebody may say that okay, our eyes have got limitation, but we have got a telescope or a microscope. Now, Srila Prabhupada points out that this telescope itself is made by a person who is not perfect. So the instrument which is made to actually magnify or whatever, or see some distant object, the telescope, itself is defective, itself is defective. Because the person who has made it is defective, has got defective uh, senses, has got illusion, is under illusion. Uh, so that's why even these um, instruments are not really going to give us the perfect understanding. 
man is never given, going to give us a perfect understanding. Just like seeing through a telescope, the sun, can they determine how big is the sun? It's just not possible. The naked eyes, you can never see how big is the sun. But is it possible by seeing through a telescope, we can determine how big is the sun? No, you cannot. Similarly, even the microscope, to see some, uh, magnify some small thing, that is okay if it is within a certain range. But if you magnify beyond a certain, because of your technology, that's not going to help you understand the, the most uh, uh, um, smallest uh, um, different objects which are there, uh, which is uh, like uh, not be able to perceive or exactly understand uh, very, very tiny things. So therefore, we are receiving this knowledge about the soul from the authoritative scriptures. That we should always remember. And somebody tries to see or do some experiment, sometimes we hear that uh, there was a uh, some special uh, uh, type of photography which uh, they used to see what happens when a person dies. What is it that is missing from the person because of which he was living and then he died and after death the body is like lifeless. So what is the difference between a living body and a dead body? So they decided to do some special photography and they said that uh, that photography of the person who was about to die. So they had images before his, just before his death and they had subsequently different images at different stages uh, and they study those uh, images or photographs and then try to understand oh what is missing now we know first of all what is missing according to the scriptures is the soul it is not that anything material is missing in a person who uh, let's say we call, we say somebody dies a natural death such a person I'm talking I'm not talking to somebody who is uh, injured in an accident, a fatal accident, and then some part of the body is missing. No, I'm not talking of such a person. I'm talking of a person who's so-called natural death. There's nothing like natural death. But anyway, let us say somebody has died uh, out of uh, natural death. And what is missing in them? According to the scriptures, we understand what is missing is the soul. The person, the, the resident of the body, Dehi is missing from the Deha. This difference is highlighted by Krishna in this verse. Dehi naha asmin yatha dehe. Dehi and Deha. Dehi is the person inside, the resident, the occupant of this body. And the body itself is Deha. So the body minus the occupant, minus the resident is a dead body, is a lifeless body. So the person is not there. The soul is not there. The occupant is missing. Occupant has left the body. Now can we see the occupant? Can we do something to determine how the occupant is leaving or when is the occupant leaving? Of course the occupant leaves at the time of death. The soul leaves at the time of death. But at that time can we do something to determine that uh, the soul is leaving? You cannot. In the Bhagavad Gita, this is particularly explained that those who are self-realized can see that the soul is leaving the body at the time of death. Those who are not self-realized, even though they may endeavor in so many different ways, science, technology, whatever, even using some mystic power, uh, yogic method, they cannot see, they cannot determine, they cannot understand, they can't perceive, they cannot... Uh, come to know. Therefore, it is said here, we have to receive knowledge from the authoritative scriptures. And that's the only way of knowing certain things which are beyond our uh, understanding through our normal methods. So therefore, uh, uh, the exam another example is given. Supposing a child wants to know who is my father. 
because the child is born to the mother and the mother nurses the child and nicely feeds the child and does everything to the child so when the child starts growing up then slowly the child starts recognizing other members of the family initially it only kind of recognizes the mother in fact small uh, infants when somebody else even tries to uh, take the child in their arms or lift the child the child starts crying crying for the mother so that means initially it only recognizes and is comfortable only in the lap of the mother in the hands of the mother but as the child grows up it starts recognizing others other family members so the child wants to know who is my father and the shastras say the only way up for the child to know who the father is the mother the authority of the mother is the only way for the child to know because it is said even if somebody tries to do an experiment in the shastras it is said like this if they try to do an experiment they cannot determine by taking they say some uh, uh, dna test i've heard like that i don't know exactly whether that dna test is uh, uh, what way it is done etc i have no idea but shastras say there is nothing which the a particular person can do as an experiment and determine who is my father there is no way uh, the child can uh, uh, or even an adult also supposing an adult wants to understand uh, certain such gentleman is my father he cannot by experiment it is not possible so similarly many many things which are not possible through experiment which are not possible through analysis which are not possible through logic beyond our understanding through logic through experiment through analysis through uh, study whatever individually collectively over a long period of time it is not possible these are all inconceivable in the shastra this word is used achintya achintya means that which is beyond the conception of a human being beyond the conception of a human being even the most intelligent human being even the most experienced human being that which is beyond our conception that is called achintya there are many 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 things that are achintya prabhupad gives very nice examples he gives the example just like a cow it eats grass and it drinks water and of course it breathes air and then it gives us milk now if you analyze what is it that is the nutritional value of grass water and air and what is the nutritional value of milk there is no uh, way the nutritional value can be compared what is the nutrition of grass and what is the nutrition of uh, milk you can never compare milk has got so much more nutrition as compared to grass and water and air it can never be compared so shila prabhupa says can the scientists oh they say something happens in the stomach of the cow it digests and converts that into milk so there is some enzymes in the uh, stomach of the cow or the intestine or whatever and then those enzymes convert that uh, mixture of grass and uh, water and uh, oxygen into some with the enzymes the conversion happens to milk okay if the enzymes are what is converting that uh, uh, food water and air or oxygen into the milk why can't you manufacture a machine in which you put some uh, uh, water you put some uh, uh, grass you put some air put whatever enzymes you want and they are analyzing what these enzymes are they are some protein uh, amino acids or something like that they see what are the uh, ingredients inside this body of the different chemicals and this is amino acids are the uh, basis of life and so many things like that the claim by the scientists so let them let them add those amino acids let them add whatever amino acids they want can they produce milk 
it is impossible and it is also shastras say please try to understand it is inconceivable by a human being how the cow is converting whatever it eats or the food it it, it partakes into milk similarly even in our own body what is happening we are eating some edibles some rice dal sabji whatever whatever you like to eat what is edible and then you are drinking some water and you are breathing some air and that gets converted to blood now blood is always a a much wanted uh, you know commodity uh, supposing somebody is undergoing a very uh, uh, difficult operation a surgery then they require some blood sometimes in some cases so when they require blood a donor has to be there why can't the medical scientists uh, convert some food items mix food this thing uh, water and uh, oxygen in a laboratory and produces blood uh, why are they not able to do it it is inconceivable for every human being for anybody or everybody how this conversion is happening in the body so this is uh, something which is called achintya it is happening it is happening millions and billions of people uh, and it is happening all the time it is not some uh, rare occurrence or some real real special thing that is happening nothing it is happening everywhere universally it is happening so how is that happening so that these things are explained in the scriptures as achintya and the scriptures say anything that is achintya the only way to know about it to understand it is from the scriptures authoritative scriptures shastra so therefore the importance of uh, um, um, accepting the scriptures understanding the nature of the scriptures as perfect because they are given by the perfect source the supreme lord krishna who is all perfect and that is the reason why we have to accept the scriptures and we are to, and supposing we are not able to understand then we have to approach a self realized soul who can explain the scriptures to us who can help us understand who can give us a process there is also a process of understanding it's not merely uh, some reading or some discussion no there is also a process because beyond merely understanding some theory or some uh, some philosophy or some uh, some statements uh, using our limited mind limited intelligence limited uh, uh, understanding uh, even if we expand our Uh, understanding of uh, different subjects however learned a person may be still the human uh, brain or human mind or human intellect is always having a particular limitation as regards understanding everything that is given in the scriptures particularly when it comes to the subject matter of the soul one has to understand from a self realized soul a bona fide spiritual master that's why whatever i am going to speak about the soul is as it is explained in the scriptures and as it is explained by shrila prabhupad uh, the self realized spiritual master who is explaining this by hearing from him and by following the process of realizing this subject matter we can actually get a proper understanding and we can realize and we can perceive the reality that i am the soul every person is the soul and this has got a lot of uh, uh, benefit for all of us and uh, we'll discuss more in the uh, next session tomorrow hari krishna hari krishna subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss any updates